John Please, Fiat Luke's blog, Thoughts About the History of Science. Thank you very much for your presentation. I remember reading your book when it was published, and I still remember pass passages almost word by word. You showed the plasmoid, and in your book, when you're t in this section referring to the different co scales of cosmic plasma and how they uh, scale down using uh, the work of Alvin and Faltheimer, um, you get in the laboratory centimeter size plasma, which are um, uh, whose activities take place in, in uh, nanoseconds corresponding to cosmic plasma taking uh, eons. Um, you mentioned uh, Bostic's work on plasmoid, and I was wondering if further work has been done on the, the shall we call it, plasma at the micro scale, such as the work of uh, Bostic. Right. Well, yeah. That's what we're doing. In other words, First of all, let me just run the video that I, the animation that I skipped over, um, which shows the formation of plasmoids at the galactic scale. So basically what we're saying is these, uh, these are produced along the axis of the galaxy. And this is what we see as, you know, the quasar, the herbig harrow object, the active galactic nuclei. So these, as we observe in nature, these have tremendous uh, magnetic fields. Now, they're fairly massive objects, but there's no evidence that they actually have uh, confinement speeds that approach the speed of light, which, by the way, uh, the formation of black holes uh, was viewed as impossible by Einstein and other pioneers. It was a, uh, Einstein uh, demonstrated that you couldn't get, although you could get relativistic velocities, you could not get to a black hole condition and Oppenheimer demonstrate that if you could get to a black hole condition, it would take an infinite amount of time. And uh, when I've pointed this out to black hole cosmologists at conferences, they say, oh, that's in the Earth's frame of reference. We're talking about the frame of reference of somebody falling into the black hole. Then the black hole uh, will contract in a finite amount of time. So. This is another way of saying black holes don't exist. So what does exist is these uh, plasmoids. They certainly are massive, but they also have uh, enormous magnetic fields. These magnetic fields depend on their scale. The larger the scale, the smaller the magnetic field, although the larger the currents involved. So we study... Uh, and about 40 other groups that use the same uh, device, the plasma focus, we study the formation of these plasmoids at an extremely micro scale. These plasmoids are typically about 500, 300 to 500 microns in radius. And to get fusion at a net energy level, we have to compress them more optimally so they get down to the scale of only 30 microns. That's what we're aiming for. So we study these, and as again, we'll go into this in the afternoon, with fast ICCD cameras, which have exposure times down to about a fifth of a nanosecond. So we can capture these plasmoids, and uh, I'll show you examples of them in the afternoon. So there has been enormous progress in studying these for the very practical reason that these plasmoids are what we believe to be the fastest route to getting uh, economically viable uh, fusion energy. Um, thanks. I like to try to clarify what can we see as opposed to um, what is uh, derived from 
theory or observation. And uh, it, it sounded like you were um, showing that there are two types of galaxies uh, that we can see, the, the radio galaxy and then the infrared and visual, and that they rotate at different rates. Uh, no, these are not two types of galaxies. These are two components of galaxies. So the inner part of a galaxy, the part of the galaxy that we can see in optical and infrared, that's the light that's coming from stars. Now, stars are these very dense objects. And I, I did forget an important point, which is when we go to stars, we no longer have magnetization. Stars are so dense that they're collisional. So these filaments don't form in the same way within stars. So you don't have, super, uh, we don't have the hierarchy of structure going down lower than stars. I mean, we do have the same process producing smaller objects, which are planets. But within the stars, there's not the same hierarchy because the plasma is now collisional. So these stars are producing the beautiful pictures of the spiral galaxies that we see in the optical. But when, uh, when astronomers trace these um, rotation curves outward, they are not using optical data. The observations are radio wave data. The radio waves are coming from the emission of plasma. So if you go further out in uh, radius in any galaxy, we're talking about disk galaxies, not the ellipticals, then you have fewer and fewer stars and so few stars that you can't use light to measure the velocity. That's why the radio waves are used. But that's only measuring the velocity of the gas. So what you have is the gas is moving supersonically past the uh, stars. If there was only gravitation, that would be impossible. After Galileo, we know that objects of different densities move identically in a gravitational field. So you would not have a situation where stars and gas are moving at different velocities. But that's what we do observe. And that means that the gas must be confined additionally to the gravitational attraction by the magnetic fields. And, then, and this, is simply, <clears throat> this is simply ignored because one of the big flaws of conventional cosmology so they ignore the existence of magnetic fields. Our videos come out of LPP Fusion's research in fusion energy, the energy which will power a future of abundance for all, with a sustainable economy and a clean environment. Goods, housing, and transportation will be affordable to all once fusion kicks in. Fusion energy is the key to building a better world now. Support fusion research, $10 a month, at lppfusion.com slash support. The link is in the description. Thanks. Thank you for an interesting talk, Mr. Lerner. Um, at one point you had said something about uh, the distances, and I think it was something along the lines, and correct me, I probably wrote this down wrong, the mass of the proton divided by the mass of the electron to the three-quarter power times C. Did I write that upside down? I think I set it upside down. Okay, no, no. Uh, so it's it's the mass of the electron divided by the mass of the proton to the three-quarters power. So that ratio is one of these numbers that we all scratch our heads about. Where did that come from? But that's 1836, 1,836 point, so on. And then if you take that to the three-quarters power and multiply it by the speed of light, you get uh, a little above a thousand kilometers a second, and roughly speaking, that's a sp a speed limit of most plasma in the universe. In the densest clusters of galaxies, you can get above that by a roughly a factor of two, um, and then the lower limit is the simpler ratio 
which is the because uh, that the, actually comes the, out to be the Rydberg speed. So right. I no no I say that that's why I asked because one was like two hundred and eighty times the speed of light. Well, that doesn't really make sense. Just one over that it inverted. Right, it's it one over t- one two hundred and eightieth the speed of light, and then the lower limit is uh, the electron mass divided by the proton mass times the speed of light. So that is of the order of a, uh, a little above 100 kilometers per second, 150. 